everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Well, I'm not out in the garden today because there's a whole lot of snow out there and it is just plain cold. But the good news is the information I wanted to share with you today can be done indoors, so I really lucked out on that. So the topic is choosing seeds for your vegetable garden. And initially I was thinking I would shoot this video in a few weeks, but the more I thought about it, I realized that you're probably receiving seed catalogs in the mail or you're looking at the offerings online. And so now is the time that you should hear these different tips so that you make the best choices for your vegetable garden. So first, let's take a quick peek out my office window and you can see what's happening out in the garden and then we'll get started. Okay, behind that hedge is the vegetable garden and you can see it is just buried in snow. So there's no point in me being out there miserable. The information that I wanted to share with you today has to do with selecting warm season crops. And these are vegetables that must be planted after the danger of frost has passed. The most important piece of information that you need to know is how long your frost-free growing season is. And this applies to choosing varieties of crops such as tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, winter squash, pumpkins, and melons. Here in Spokane, our last spring frost is usually around the middle of May, and the first fall frost is usually around the middle of September. And that has really been varying lately, so it does make it difficult to have any hard and fast rules, but you need a guideline. So in our case, we have roughly 120 frost-free days to grow warm season crops in. While that might sound like a long time, here's a really important thing you need to know. If you start your seeds indoors first, it's tempting to think that their indoor growing time counts towards those 120 days. Unfortunately, that's not the case. When you actually plant your seedlings outdoors, that's when the clock starts ticking, so to speak. And that is because the seedlings need time to get acclimated to outdoor conditions before they really start growing. If you are new to the area or you're new to gardening, how do you know what your growing conditions are? Well, you could ask a neighbor, you could ask another gardener, you could join a garden club, which I think is a great idea, or you can ask your local master gardener program. But how do you find them? All you have to do is a web search saying master gardener program near me, and it should bring up your county and then you'll find the contact information for you. I've been a Master Gardener for about 21 years now, and I think this program is so wonderful. It's associated with land-grant universities all across the U.S. and in Canada, and they offer free information. They'll help you sort problems out and give you great suggestions for plants that do well in your area and so on. So they are a fantastic resource. There are so many seed companies that mail out catalogs around this time every year. Plus, they all have great websites filled with all sorts of information about the seeds they offer. On my website, susansinthegarden.com, I have a list of many popular seed catalogs. Here's how you can find it. Once you're on my site, just go to the Guides menu, and you'll notice there is Links. When you get to that page, the first thing that displays is links to extension services and master gardener links. Underneath that is a guide to companies that sell flower bulbs. And underneath that is what you're after, seed sources and garden supplies online. And you'll find all sorts of companies listed here. So on the left is a direct link to the company, and on the right you can see what their web address is. So you might look through the list and find something that you really want to get a catalog for or to look at their offerings online. 
When you start looking at different varieties of warm season crops, always check the average number of days it will take a variety to mature. You can see on the seed packet in the middle, it says 100 days. This is important information because it helps you determine if that variety will produce mature fruits for you before the end of your season. Now let's look at these same three seed packets so you can see examples of winter squash and how many days they need to mature. This first one is Poti Marone and it requires 85 to 95 days. I have grown this for about three years now and for the most part I've always gotten a nice harvest from them. This middle one is an interesting story. So I have grown it for about three years and it is hit or miss in our garden and you can see why. It requires 100 days to reach maturity. I don't know what I was thinking about when I bought these seeds, except I probably just got excited about them and thought, oh, I want to try them. We have had very poor luck with this variety, except for this year because we had an extremely long summer, and that meant the plants had enough time to mature the fruits, and so we got a great harvest from them. If you have a longer season than I do, I do recommend this variety because it's great. Now this one I'm very excited about. This is Burpees Butterbush Butternut Squash. I love butternut squash, but they always need quite a long time to mature. Well, a gal who occasionally comments on my Facebook page told me about this one, and it only needs 75 days to reach maturity. So you better believe I ordered them as soon as I heard that, and I've already received them. But these are a really nice size butternut squash, and I feel very confident that they should produce well in our growing season. The last thing I wanted to mention is that every year I post a list of the vegetable varieties we'll be growing, along with suggested seed sources for the seeds. Here's how you can find it. Once you're on susansinthegarden.com, once again you're going to the guides menu but this time you're going down to Susan's Garden 2023. You can see I still have this year's list on there because a lot of times people like me to leave it on for a longer period of time. So let's go to next year's plan and you can see I've got a chart here and for example here's artichoke, the variety is Tavor and you can see that there are four sources for the seeds listed. That doesn't mean it's all of the places it's listed, but this gives you some good places to start. So that is for all the vegetables, and I also want to mention I'm doing something different for next year. I've also listed the annual flower varieties that I'm going to grow and seed sources for them. Remember to always check with your local independent garden center because it's great to patronize them and you won't have to pay shipping. Okay, that's everything I wanted to share today. I hope this video was helpful. I am so excited about the 2023 growing season, and I promise to help you be successful at gardening all along the way through these videos. Happy gardening.